Hey guys, welcome back to Auto Technic. In my last video where I was talking about this bumper conversion, I mentioned that I did most all the work probably two years ago. And there's something that I recently noticed when I was referencing some old photos of the car on the valence that I really overlooked up until this point. Now the struggle with this was we ordered all these bumpers and the valence is basically as a bundle package from a reseller overseas and had them shipped over. And it's been so long since we purchased some, I can't really, you know, easily get the one that I need. I can't ship this one back. So I'm just kind of stuck with what I have, but I think there's a way to make it work. If we compare the valence that came with this kit versus the one that was on the car, there's a lot of differences on openings for cooling. Since my car is the M5 and I have the oil cooler that's down below the radiator, I don't want to block those off because I don't want any issues with the car running hot or hot oil temps. Let's go ahead and get the camera over here and see the European valence panel that I got with the parts. Okay, so this is the European panel that came with all of our parts. And as I've previously mentioned, I have the genuine BMW factory lower spoiler on it, which I'm going to be taking off here in a minute. On the M5, it's hard to see because the US spec M5 has the cladding in front of the valence, but there's actually an extra opening up here that gives its access to the radiator. There's two smaller openings down here that give cooling to the um, oil cooler. And then up top, where all these are, these indentations are actually open. And the proper M5 valence that's a European spec has those. That proper European valence, it's not available brand new anymore. We did do a brief search trying to find a good used um, European M5 valence that has the proper openings for the cooling. And it was really, we could find one, but just the cost to get it shipped and the time that we needed it, it was not realistic to buy it. And we moved on from it and I'm going back to my plan B now with this. So if we go ahead and come over here, I can grab this valence and this is the stock us m5 valence that was on this car but you can see immediately the openings that i'm talking about now one thought that you have is i can just go and take it and cut out these openings in the existing valence and call it good now the reason why i don't want to do that is if you look they have these nice rolled edges all the way around on them there and then it's actually stamped on the bottom here for these lower pieces. So I was kind of looking at it and analyzing it and I didn't want to just take them and cut it. I am going to take this piece out and cut it and weld it into this piece, but that wasn't really my first option either until I realized there's a pretty easy way to do it. So on this valence, I already went ahead and used some aircraft stripper and got it down the bare metal where I'm going to cut it. Uh, this whole valence is actually covered from the factory in a stone chip guard. So it's a kind of a rubbery texturized coating then painted black and since I'll be doing the metal work I didn't want any of that there so aircraft stripper took a couple coats and got it stripped down the bare metal. I need to get the center section out of this valence onto the European valence but I want to minimize my cutting and welding because of distortion and body work. The less welding that I end up doing to this the better it will look like as a finished product. So I got to looking at it and I realized that it's actually, you know, spot welded here on the top on both of the valences. And by looking at that, I realized that I could use that to my advantage by drilling out the spot welds. I'm going to initially just cut it straight down right here into this tow hook access area. And then I can cut this piece right here. Therefore, the only parts that you'll see being welded are down here, which are completely covered, as you can see on that one and this section right here of about three inches. That will be welded and I'll need the metal finish that down. And then this is all covered by the bumper and I can just um, basically do a rosette weld back through those to get those back on. So that's my game plan of how I'm gonna go ahead and make the valence that I need so I can basically put the proper cooling ducts into this European valence that has the proper provisions for my European lights. So the first steps I'm gonna go ahead and do is, I think I'm gonna get this valence masked up and get these holes drilled out and I'm gonna rough cut the centerpiece out. I'm gonna cut more than I need so that way I can be smarter about where I make my cuts on the European valence and where the welds actually are. So I'll be more aggressive when I get over here and cut these and cut them off and drill the top and then I'll start analyzing 
the fitment onto the US spec, excuse me, the European valence, um, but I'll need to get that front spoiler off before I get to that point. So I need to go ahead and set the camera down and get this piece cut out. Alright guys, I got the center section of the stock valence cut out, just rough cut it, and on the front here where it had the spot welds, I actually just ground out the spot welds on the upper portion of the metal that was here, uh, just completely sacrificed it so that way I didn't have to end up drilling through this um, to preserve this slip. And then once I got this cut free, I just did a little hammer and dolly work to straighten this lip back up. This is the lip that sits underneath the valence of the new piece, so it won't be seen, but I just got it nice and straight. I did hold it up to the other valence and eyeballed it, and I'm going to make my initial rough cuts right here on this side that follows along with this edge. And then on the other side, on the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and just initially cut it right down here. And then when I cut the other valence on the car, I'll cut it further up here, so I'm going to have overlapping metal. I eventually, when I weld this in, I will not weld it in with overlapping metal. It's going to be a butt joint, but that's going to give me some room to hold it up and decide which is going to be the best way or the best area to make this connection. So is what I need to do next is go ahead and take this over to the saw. I'm going to trim off these um, extra pieces here, and then we're going to go ahead and start holding this up to the valence on the car. Just finished trimming up the piece on the bandsaw and I've also fitted it to the car, just kind of mocking it up and seeing what we have to work with. You'll notice on the car that I actually have the valence back on and I have it completely bolted back in place. Um, the other valence, I got the center piece out just fine, but when I was cutting it apart, it got twisted, bent and destroyed because I essentially cut all the structural strength out of it once I started making these cuts here and here it just started flopping around i expected that and i was fine with it because i only needed that center piece on the other valence i don't want that to happen here so i have it bolted to the car and that's going to help keep the shape and then i'm going to go ahead and drill out the holes and cut this one out with everything on the car and just leave it in position and fit the other piece so i'm hoping that it won't be too bad i also am going to go ahead and Unlike the other one, I ground out the spot welds because I didn't need to preserve this top piece and I did not want holes on the back piece. Well, this one, the back piece doesn't matter and the front piece I need to keep as well, but a hole will help me out because I can use those to spot weld it back on. So I will just drill all of these spot welds out through both pieces. Once I'm done with that, I'm then going to cut the panels and remove the, the panel from the car and I'll work on fitting the other one up. Now, you can see these marks here. I made just a rough mark of where the other panel lined up. I was kind of going back and forth, trying to decide if I wanted to use a template to mark it or cut it, and really haven't decided yet, but is what I plan on doing is I'll make a cut further in, um, probably a half inch from my line, and get this center piece removed, and then I can go ahead and match up and center the other piece and trim as I go to get it to fit.
So we got the centerpiece cut out and you'll see that I made a little bit of a change at the 11th hour on how I was going to cut it out. And I decided to leave this material here now for the simple fact that I have this opening that is a locating space for the cover plate for the fog light. And that cover plate runs from the edge of the fog light to the oval opening. By retaining that there, I can overlay the new um, section of the tail panel and that'll let me line up where I've already cut it and get a good scribe. So I'm very accurate and I'll just do one side at a time and then tack that piece in place. And then I'll start working on the bottom and getting those trimmed. And then the last thing I'll do is go ahead and tack it up top. You can see I have them laying down here on the floor, the old versus the new. Um, you can just see the simple difference of the big opening up top in the center and the two smaller ones. You'll notice on this one, it does have the indentations for the smaller ones and I could have just cut those out. But, you know, essentially all I need is this opening that has the rolled edge. But if I were to cut just that opening and say run a weld down here, that's a lot of area of the weld and there's gonna be a lot of distortion and that's just a difficult way to go about it. So even though I don't necessarily need that bottom half, it's easier because by utilizing this tow hook cover opening, I'm minimizing how much I'm welding. And if you also note right up here where I'll be doing this bulk of the weld, this whole section's covered by that cover I was talking about. So the only section that will ever be visible is this section right here. So it's about two inches that will be visible and I'll be able to get this welded up and metal finish down to where you won't be able to see. But rather than trying to cut just this one section out and weld it in, I would have a ton of welded, welded area and warpage and it just, it's a lot of work. So it's actually less work to replace more. So that's why I went through and chose this route. So you can see on the top here, I've also went ahead and already put some weld through primer on top where it's gonna slide up underneath the lip of the valence that's on the car. And I did the same thing for the valence on the car. So is what I need to do now is I need to go ahead and continue getting this trimmed and lined up with these holes on the side right up there and get one side started to get tacked. Then I'll move to the other side. And like I said, then start working on the bottoms and top. And hopefully we can have this in here in an hour or so. All right guys, just finished welding in the center section of this valence and I'm gonna go ahead and show you exactly where I did the work and the way I went about it. Now, like I mentioned earlier, I initially left these pieces on the original or this black Euro valence right here because of these holes. And I used those holes to overlap with this center piece. So that way I could essentially use those holes as a marking point to center this piece. So. Once I did that, I clamped it onto the side and then I just used my air saw and trimmed off the excess along the center of the new 
um, center section I welded in, and then that left me a perfect edge and I butt welded it on. So my weld was actually right down here through here. And then underneath, I welded right on that corner. So everything was butt welded in. And um, a couple of things that I had to do once I finished welding both sides, I went up top and welded in the holes that I drilled on the old one. So now it's all one piece. Um, there was one hole here in the center that is above the lip spoiler that was for the original um, M5 cladding for the US car. So I had to go ahead and cut a piece out and weld that hole up. I had to go ahead and drill three holes for the new spoiler. Um, so that way it fits. And also one thing I did while I was working on it is I took some of the other valence and I finished off this piece right here where the fog light goes. Uh, it had a bit of a different cutout because of the Euro mount and the way it was meant to be. And then it got bigger because I had to cut for these mounts and it just rather, it just looked unfinished to me. Even though the bumper mounts on and overhangs most of this, I still didn't like it. So I just trimmed out basically a piece off the other valence from here, moved it over and welded it in. Now doing this did make it pretty tight to get back in there to tighten the bumper bolts. So I have to use a super short stubby socket so I can get back in there and tighten it. Um, I did one side first and tested it with the socket to make sure I could actually get the bumper on and off before I did the other side. So there's one more thing that I have to do with the valence here and that's on top where these indentations are. If you remember on the factory USM5, these are cut out. Now, there was really no effective way to cut that section out that had these because of the amount of metal work and warpage that would have ensued. So I just went ahead and decided that I was gonna cut them out. I did this one here as a test and I essentially just used uh, eighth inch fine line tape and marked the perimeter, which is roughly the same size as they were on the US car. Um, drilled four holes in the corners, used the air saw, cut it out, and then used a file to fine tune it and get it, you know, <clears throat> square and looking straight. So I need to go ahead and pull this valence off and get the remaining of these cut out and filed and cleaned up. Okay, just finished getting them cut out and filed and came out really nice. We can compare them to what's left of the stock valence and the factory cutouts and um, pretty much spot on. Once everything's painted, there will really be no difference there. So. We now finally have the valence that I need with all of the openings and the Euro lights. Uh, definitely sacrifice the original valence. You can see what's left of the outside corners, so this center piece. And that was actually the center of the Euro valence. So now that that's all wrapped up, the only thing I have left to do is the front chin spoiler. And like I mentioned, I need to get the openings for these oil cooler vents into the spoiler. On the back side of the factory lip spoiler, you can see this flange here where it meets up to the valence of the car. And then it has the opening here for the oil cooler. Now I've already confirmed that all my openings line up. This sits nice and even with the valence and I have no issues there. So now I can go ahead and cut out these center pieces. Now the way they cast these, it's thinner around the outside edges. So they do that with the intentions if you've been if you need to cut them out, it doesn't take that much work to do so. Is what I'm gonna do is just take a really sharp X-Acto knife and I'll just score around the edges and just keep making passes at it until eventually it cuts it out. I will go through on the front side and tidy up the cuts and smooth everything out and give the edge a nice subtle roll and we should be good to go from there. Okay, just finished cutting out the holes for the oil cooler on the lip spoiler and sanding them smooth. Um, once I went ahead and cut them out with the razor blade, I filed them flat and then just sanded them out. So you have a pretty nice finished product and you can see that they line up well with the openings in the, the valence. Um, I went ahead and threw the spoiler back on and I have the bumper back on so you can see the finished product. Granted, I don't have the turn signals and fog lights in or the bumper trim on the bumper. The reason I left the bumper trim and the license plate bracket off of the car right now and didn't put them on at this point is my next project. I'm gonna see if I can make a one-piece bumper trim and eliminate the license plate bracket. 
So keep an eye on the channel for that. That will be the next video that I'm making. All right, guys, it's now about a week later from when I filmed the video that you're now watching. And I was doing something else to the car and I just noticed one thing which pertains to when I cut out these openings on this valence is now you can see just this corner of the front frame horn and the mount for the bumper. And I went and took a paint pen and marked it white in there. And really, I don't like that. I think it looks a little, little tacky. And luckily, when I mentioned that I built those front frame horns, the reinforcements, because I didn't like the way these aftermarket brackets were, and I strengthened them, that's gonna let me go ahead and cut this off. So I'm gonna get the valence off the car, and I'm gonna go and kind of take a look at what's there once I have the valence off after I marked it. And I'll be able to trim this and have it to where you can't see anything when you look down. And I'll still have the strength for my bump bumper mounts. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this off. I'll get it cut and then I'll show you real quick what I did. And just one of those small things, um, small details people might not notice, but I don't like it. I'm here, we're not painted yet. So I'm gonna get it taken care of. All right, here's the plan. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this um, support right here, which will cut off this leg. And then I'll cut this ear off, which actually has this whole flat face right here. And I'll cut it so it's just straight of the box right here. Um, basically cut this edge off and I'll keep that right there. And I'll still have plenty of strength because I put this reinforcement here and the support piece here. So I'll have one mount here and then everything else will be on the support. And this whole section will be gone. So I'll still have the good support. I'll be able to mount the bumper and I won't be able to see that. So I guess in the end, going overkill on this reinforcement came back to pay me a little favor here to where I can trim this up and make it invisible from the top when it's all complete. So I'll get that stuff trimmed up and I'll show you the final product. All right, there you go. A couple minutes of the grinder and I was able to cut that off and I cut it about a quarter inch back because there was an existing line up top where I just matched it up with, trimmed it off trim this back piece off and I rounded everything out and smoothed it up. So now you'll see that when the valence is on that you won't be able to see anything here. And I don't even have this bolt in. I just have the two bolts for my support in here. And this thing still very solid. So really lost no strength. And as you can see to the other side, got rid of all the visual stuff that you would be seeing through that hole. Lucky that I caught it now before it went the paint and it only took me about 15 minutes to trim this side up. I'll get this one done real quick and uh, we'll put the valence back on and make sure we got it taken care of. All right, there we go. As you can see, looking down, you can see the side of the frame horn, but there's not much I can do about that. But coming straight down, everything's free and clear in there. So once everything's assembled and you have the bumper on, the grills, it'll be really hard to see back in there. I wanted to make a good effort to get it all cleaned up so it doesn't look, you know, awkward, which I felt that it did. Just one thing to show that for me, it's the details that matter, the real small little details. Uh, they may seem tedious, but when they all add up on the car, I really feel it's what sets one car apart from the other. So pay attention to little things like that and try to improve them. And in the end, if you do enough small things, it'll make a big, big difference to your project. With today's video with this valence, I hope you guys um, took away some stuff and learned something or I gave you some ideas. Mainly the reason why I wanted to walk through this in so much detail is to show that if you guys are doing a project and you can't get the part you need, um, there's always other options. You can make the part, you can modify a part. There's a lot of different ways to go about it, but don't let little hiccups like that slow you down on your builds. Um, you can just find a solution, power through, and move on to keep things progressing forward. Thanks for stopping by my channel and taking the time to watch my video. Guys, please subscribe and turn on notifications so you can keep up to date on this project. And if you have any comments, please drop them below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Thank you.